G'day, um, my name's Cher, I'm a first year medical student at ANU and um, I made this video mostly in response to a few people asking me how I went about applying last year and a bit about how the ranking system works. So this is after you've gotten your GAMSAT score and uh, I've put a few links in the description as well about further resources that you can look into but um, yeah. So enjoy the video, um, hopefully it helps you a bit. So I won't talk too much about GAMSAT because most of you probably know what that is already. But I just want to emphasize that you won't get an interview offer without a good enough combined GPA and GAMSAT, which will give you a ranking. So some unis weigh GPA more, some unis weigh GAMSAT more, but in general, most of my peers got a minimum of 60 to 62 in their GAMSAT and at least a GPA of 6.2, 6.3 to give you a better idea. So once you're on track with those two things, then you can consider applying. Um, I'd also like to add that your circumstances can change depending on what uni you're going to at the moment. So uh, just in this, as an example, um, I went to Flinders University last year and I was part of a sub quota with um, medical science students, which was the degree that I did, paramedic students and health science students. So we all were combined and had a certain amount of positions set just for us within the medical school degree at Flinders. Um, and it's probably, there are probably some similar things going on at your uni, so I feel like the first thing you should do is check with your first year coordinator and see um, what sub quotas you're eligible for. And that can be super helpful as well because it can lower the barrier for entry um, if you belong to one of those sub quotas. So when I was going through the application process, the way I like to think of it was that unis either belong to a GEMSAS or a non-GEMSAS group. So GEMSAS is like a consortium of universities. Um, I think there's about nine. And they work together to rank your GPA and GAMSAT and interview score. And that's what I'll start off by talking about. So the way this ranking system works is um, when you select your preference, your combined GAMSAT and your GPA score will put you into a ranking system that lists the highest person all the way down to the bottom from that ranking, each person is grouped into their first preference and the people within those groups are ranked again. So if you rank high enough, you'll get an interview offer from that uni of your first preference. If not, then you'll be removed from that first preference list and put into a pool of participants into your second preference. And if you rank high enough in your second preference, you will get a formal email to ask you to come take an interview. After you go take your interview, the system will recalculate your score and put you back into the pool of applicants for your second preference. The interview process makes a big difference, meaning that someone who's at the bottom of the rankings in their second preference could be bumped up quite a bit and secure themselves a place and someone with a high initial ranking may get removed from that second place and from there they'll get put into a pool of the applicants at their third preference and this just keeps going on and on until you either get a place or don't get a place. So really, all you need to understand is that the higher you rank with your combined GPA and GAMSAT score and the better your interview, the better your chance of getting into that preference. Because you only do one interview, but your interview score is sent to everyone at or below your preference. So in my case, I applied um, for ANU as my first preference, and then I got an interview offer for, for my first preference, and then a subsequent offer after my interview. So it's pretty straightforward for me, but just be aware that if you send something for your first preference and even if you get an interview at your first preference you may get an offer from your second preference or third preference depending on how it's all recalculated. This means that the hardest unis to get into will be the ones that the most people put as their first preference and these are generally the ones with the highest population densities such as University of Melbourne. But since there's no real concrete statistics on what people put as their first preference, you're better off just going for the place where you feel most comfortable going. So this brings me to the other category, which is the non-GEMSAS unis. 
uh, which I'll put up a few examples of, but I'm sure there's, a, I think there's a couple more that I've forgotten. But the only difference between these and that is that you have to apply it directly through their respective sites and they are ranked completely separate from GemSAS. So that means if you do poorly in a GemSAS interview, but you nail one of these interviews, then you still get a chance to get into medical school. I had the opposite scenario happen to me where I planned to get into Flinders. My grades were great, then I just bombed the interview. So anything can happen when you put a nervous person into a high pressure situation like that. It's like popcorn. But just make sure you keep in mind sub quotas, extra course requirements and deadlines for each of these individual unis that you're interested in applying for. Um, if you know those three things when you're planning to apply it, the only thing stopping you is your score. And I would encourage you to apply for GEMSAS definitely and as many non-GEMSAS unis which you think you could make a good fit in because, you know, like, it'll just maximise your opportunities, give you a better chance to practice interviews in case you're not good at it and um, it'll just improve your chances overall. Uh, one other th thing I'd like to add that I feel like you should definitely check out is the Paging Doctor website. I have the link in the description. But go there, make an account, and um, it's an amazing repository of advice on nearly every aspect of the medical school application in Australia. So, um, yeah, go there um, if you want more specific information. Other than that, all I can really say is uh, make sure you do some volunteering, make sure you have some great examples from your degree that you can share in your resume and application process. Um, damn, damn, make damn, sure you're damn, keeping damn, your GPA damn. up just for a little bit longer this year. Is the year you're doing your application is really stressful and you should just make sure you have your key deadline dates in. Um, yeah, I know when I didn't get into Flinders, um, I was pretty devastated uh, and I was really worried and I lost a lot of sleep last year worrying if I'd get in. but. I got that off a letter from ANU and you know it, it was one of the happiest days of my life so be prepared and um, to move if you don't get into your first preference and you know don't be open-minded about it as well because like I didn't think I'd enjoy Canberra as much as I do like it's a really great university really great place to live and um, I've learned so much this year that you know I couldn't imagine going to Flinders now so yeah, be open to that kind of thing. And I think that's most of the stuff I had to say. Um, let me know how your experiences go applying, if this was helpful. Um, I'm really keen to see, hear some stories. So, yeah, thanks for that. Just share. Bye.